Hello, Professor Kiger. This is Danny in your GAM 207 course here in week seven, and we are showing off our final project. So here we are. Uh, this is the main menu. Go ahead and jump into the game. Now you can probably tell this is the default map um, for third person games, but a lot of what I was working on was um, blue, blueprints and scripts. There's a lot of custom scripting going on in here under the under the curtain behind the scenes. So uh, I think first we'll just, just go over the controls. Um, I've got it set up with a four four way camera system, sort of like surveillance, watching the player at all times, and then a fifth camera, which accesses a first person mode and brings up reticle. And then as you can see in both modes, I've got a widget that shows the ammo count. And if we were to shoot a couple bullets here, we've got a um, recoil from the weapon and also a muzzle flash. And um, wherever the bullet hits, we get a little explosion. So all those systems in place, I can go back in and change those however I need. I just figured I would get those where they needed to be. Also brought in a couple of sound effects. We've got two different sound effects with the pistol firing and a reload one, just controlled with the um, controller or mouse and keyboard. I've got it set up for either way. And so the objective of this game mode is to just kill these mindless drones. I don't have them set up to hurt you or anything, so we can just run through them. But once you kill all of these guys, Oh, yeah, I've also got a nice kill animation for them. I just use the uh, Unreal Explosion asset to blow them up. So once they're dead, they just explode into nothing. So go ahead and kill them off. Two more. I have them rigged up to go so slow that I think the game doesn't detect them as moving sometimes and then while we're on the topic of things that need to be fixed I haven't set up a um, I forget what the camera system's called where you can see through objects when it's between the player I've seen a couple of tutorials on YouTube so I'll probably try those out um, I think I'll just basically have the two walls for whatever camera angle you are facing to just disappear I think that would be the easiest way. And once we kill this character here, I'll go ahead and reload again. It will end the game. So there you go. That's the full game. Um, we'll jump out of that real quick and go into the blueprints. And I think I'll just show off the uh, third person blueprint real quick, which is basically the one that I did the most work in. So, all right. And here we are in the third person player's blueprint. Um, this is the sort of base material, which I've also done a little bit of editing to so that we're actually uh, detecting the direction the player is facing so that the camera knows um, what direction the player should be moving when you hit a control. Because it was, it was controlling really wrong whenever you would try to push forward and the camera was facing one way so it would think forward was a different direction. Uh, this way, the camera doesn't affect the player's movement. Jump input. Uh, the only edit I did here was I added a branch to check whether or not the player was aiming, because I don't want the player moving or jumping whenever they're aiming. And this right here gets the... So that's going to set the ignore look input so that um, the player can't move the camera around when they're in the third person mode. And then also at the event begin play, I needed to get the pistol in their hand and then display the ammo counter, which I'm sure I could actually just disconnect these from the event begin play and rig those up to a trigger of some kind, like uh, actually creating a little pistol model that floats around or whatever, you know, so I could have it connected however I needed it to. Um, this bit here controls the firing of the bullet. So we're going in, uh, it's checking if we're aiming or not first, and then it's checking if we have uh, more than zero in the mag, and if we are not reloading to actually fire a bullet. 
And then down the line, it's spawning the um, little flash, muzzle flash, and then it's using the ammo here. And then I also added this little bit here on the end so that it uh, has a little bit of recoil when you fire. And then down below that, this all handles the reload. So it's checking if the mag is less than the maximum uh, amount it can be. And then that the ammo, the reserve ammo is not zero. And if that is true, then it's going through and playing the sound. It's reloading the pistol and uh, setting that all up. So let's see. Let's look at the camera system now. And it's kind of a beast here. Uh, this is checking a lot. Uh, first, it's checking if the character is falling, and then it's going through and branching out through here. I have a bit of a delay set up between the activation, and that is because we also have a fade system set up with a delay. And it also disables the player's input when they're swapping between cameras, so that the camera doesn't have to update all of that. So this way it goes through all the cameras one way, and then this, this second part down here is, is actually handling it going the other direction. So this is all the right bumper, and then that's all the left bumper. And over here we've got the first person perspective camera, and it's also doing some fun little checks in here that are checking which camera is active whenever you go into first person so that whenever you come out of first person it goes back to that camera rather than defaulting to the first camera in the list. And then down the line here we've got it's allowing it to use the controller rotation so that you can actually look around once you go into first person because before I had the camera disabled and that's set up right there. And then it's also detecting that so that it knows which direction the player's model should face so that whenever you do rotate the camera around, it actually turns the player as well. And then this little bit here is that. That's, and that's a really handy part right there. Kind of sets up the whole thing. If that doesn't work, then the whole camera fails. And then below that, let's see. Okay, yeah, that, so this is the inverse of that. So going out of camera, out of first person camera, it's checking which one of these is checked to true. And then if it is true, then it's going to that camera. So that's how that works. It, it goes through here, it goes through all of your cameras, and it's checking which one is active. And then it goes through the branch. It, so if camera one is active, it goes through the branch, it says deactivate the player's movement set camera one to true with this boolean and then deactivate camera one and go into first person camera and then the inverse of that it is going through the branches and checking which one of those booleans is set to true whichever one is set to true it's going to turn it back to false it's going to activate that camera specifically and reverse all the changes that first person might make and turn off the widget which is the um the reticle and I think that's about all the main changes I made in here. But it is a lot. It's This part right here is a real pain if you try to figure out. So for anyone looking, that's how you do that. There probably is an easier and cleaner way to do it, but this way has worked fine for me. Uh, up here, the camera fade. Um, it's pretty basic. It just basically goes from, from alpha to alpha. It doesn't do anything fancy. Uh, I think in the future a nice effect would be the camera wiping one way or the other depending on which way you were switching between them, but uh, for now it gets the job done. And that's about it. So I hope you're having a great week and we will see you in the next one. Thanks.